Hi, my name is Morgan Brown. This is part uh, one of a two-part series on geothermal earth tubes, particularly vertical earth tubes. Uh, application I have in mind here is to heat or cool a greenhouse. So in an earth tube you basically have uh, a, traditionally, you'll bury four to six inch drainage pipe uh, below the frost line. Typically it's as deep as a backhoe can safely uh, dig. Uh, it could be four to eight feet deep. Uh, so the idea is you basically, uh, with a blower, you send air from the greenhouse down into the earth tube. And uh, that air that's down in, down in the earth tube will uh, uh, heat or heat will be transferred from the earth into the uh, into the air. So you either heat it or cool it. And sends it back up into the uh, into the greenhouse. So it's a very cheap and effective way of accomplishing this. So what I'm going to highlight is actually a vertical earth tube system. So instead of uh, using a backhoe to bury the uh, pipe, <coughs> we're actually going to use uh, a post hole auger, a little handheld thing to drill wells as deep as you can get them. Uh, realistically, it's about 20 feet. I was only able to drill to 12 feet before I hit bedrock here in uh, Denver, Colorado. But uh, since our frost line is about at 5 feet depth, um, by getting to 12 feet I've got 7 feet of hole below the uh, ground and uh, very, very safely insulated from any fluctuation throughout the year. So these uh, vertical systems have some real advantages. You know, for one, you uh, um, it's easier to get into a small space if you don't want to or can't get a backhoe into your property. But uh, more importantly, the uh, <clears throat> efficiency, uh, because we don't have to bury the tube, uh, we can actually keep the uh, hole open. So the idea here is you basically have an inner tube, uh, the small black lines that you blow air down into from the blower, and then it uh, blows down to the bottom of the hole and circulates back up. And you get really good heat transfer down here at the bottom of the hole because you have a good coupling between uh, the air and the wall of the uh, of the uh, well. And that warmed or cooled air comes up to the surface where it can be used to uh, warm or cool your structure. Um, you know, and because it's, because it's uh, vertical, you can get definitively below the frost line. You're not uh, playing, especially in, you know, uh, northern climates, the frost line may be deeper than you can get with a backhoe. So even if you don't can't drill it to 100 feet, this thing has value. Uh, I've seen people with these post hole augers drill to a 25 or 30 feet deep. Uh, I think 20 feet's a realistic limit, but uh, nonetheless. So why are we doing this? Um, here's a plot of ground temperatures as a, as a function of uh, day of the year. You can see here around day 21, this is uh, essentially January 21st. You can see that uh, the purple curve is essentially the temperature just below the surface, six inches below the surface. And um, uh, there's a lot of fluctuations throughout the season. It fluctuates from 32 degrees up to 72 degrees in this particular location. I don't know where it was. Um, compare that to 12-foot uh, uh, depth where you have an average temperature of about 52 degrees with only uh, perhaps uh, s uh, seven degrees of, uh, of annual variation. Uh, so even the 12 foot curve compared to the 5 foot curve, it's a it's a big difference. Um, so I think you can you can argue that by getting down deep with the vertical earth tube, um, we are at an advantage. So here's just a quick uh, description of of the system that I have, the pilot system I had. It's not pretty, but it's it's just a test system. So I drilled two holes, and I've got the inline duct blower that. You, that uh, blows air into a four inch tube, nice little device, uh, 90 cubic feet per minute, 12 watts, and I've teed it off into uh, to go down into two different wells using expandable uh, drain pipe that you can get at Home Depot. Here are the two holes that I've drilled. Uh, the tool is nominally six inches in diameter, but uh, realistically when you're by the time you're done digging the hole to maximum depth, uh, you're probably seven inches wide. And here I've laid the, uh, the apparatus down into the holes. So cold air is pumped by the blower um, down into the tubes, down to the bottom of the hole, and then the warmed air comes up to the surface. 
surface and then exits through these vents. You notice I've got bricks all around it as I'll show you in the next slide here. Um, what I do is I actually cover the whole um, area around the wells with uh, wood and rocks. It's, it's ugly, but it's just a test project. The idea here is to really keep, I want to keep uh, debris from going in the holes. I want to keep things from going down the holes. I want to keep water out of the holes. And I want to kind of limit where the where the air comes in and goes out. So this is, I wouldn't say it's airtight, but uh, most of the air is coming in through the uh, through the blower, and most of the air is exiting out the uh, little vents here. And I've got thermometers on the inlet and the outlet, so we can measure temperature. <coughs> so how does this, this system perform? Uh, I, I took observations for about five days, manually logging the temperatures uh, outside. So from a, from a weather station off of uh, weather underground, and I monitored the temperature, the inlet temperature and the outlet temperature. So the inlet temperature is essentially the, the temperature of the greenhouse. The outlet temperature is what's coming out of the earth tube, so it's kind of how much heating we're getting. So you can see here, um, on this particular, I, I picked about a, a day and a half uh, to highlight. Here at hour uh, 77, notice how um, the, the, the air temperature outside was about uh, 19 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature inside the greenhouse is about 31 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're comfortably 11 degrees above. So the so the system is doing a job of, of keeping the greenhouse partially warm, even though it's a small system. And realistically, to keep this greenhouse warm, uh, we'd probably need a 10 well system or maybe more. Uh, but notice how at the coldest times of the day, there's a, in this case, there's about a six degree difference between the uh, temperature on the inlet and the outlet. So uh, that actually corresponds to about 200 watts of uh, of heating of the air that's being pumped down, so it's a pretty pretty impressive efficiency actually. Um, 200 watts running all night long that would cost you a pretty penny. So what happens as the day warms? As the day warms, the outside temperature rises. In this case, it's a very warm uh, January day here in Denver. We're up near uh, 60 degrees, and um, you can see actually the outside temperature is is warmer than the temperature inside the greenhouse, which in turn is warmer than the inside, the temperature in the earth tube. You can see there's a crossover point here at, at about, uh, my estimation, probably 45, 47 degrees, um, where um, colder than that, and the, earth, the earth tube is heating, warmer than that, the earth, earth tube is actually cooling. So if we were being really persnickety about it, we could actually uh, turn off the, uh, rig up a system to turn off the blower when the temperature on the outlet was was colder than, than what was going going down and, and vice versa if we wanted to run it in cooling mode. So some, some notes on uh, the efficiency of these earth tubes. This is, this is an equation. It's not super complicated even though it looks like it. Uh, a typical measure of efficiency of any heater, heating or cooling system is called the coefficient of performance. You now essentially that's the power transferred to the air via heating or cooling divided by the power supplied to the blower or to the air conditioner, to the heater. Um, so let's look at this in a little more detail. The uh, power transferred to the air is simply the mass flow of the air that's in the tube. So how many pounds of air are being moved through the tube over a given length of time. The specific heat of air, which measures the amount of heat required to heat a given um, mass of air, a pound of air, uh, one degree. And then you multiply it by the inlet, the outlet temperature minus the inlet temperature. So, as, as a concrete example, uh, I've got a 90 cubic foot per minute fan. It draws 12 watts. And let's just say that the inlet temperature was 37 and the outlet temperature was 42. So, the mass flow of the air in the tube is 90 cubic feet per minute. The density of air is 0.08 pounds per cubic foot. And we divide by 60 to convert from minutes to seconds. So we get a mass flow of uh, 0.12 pounds per second, which is a su surprising amount considering you, you don't think air weighs very much, but it actually does. Specific heat of air, you can look this up uh, online. It's actually uh, 0.241 BTUs per pound degree Fahrenheit. We're going to want to convert from uh, BTUs to watts, so the conversion factor. Um, a watt is a, is a, a unit of uh, energy or, or heat per unit time. So uh, that conversion factor is 0 0.000948 BTUs per second equals one watt. Just plugging in numbers, we have uh, the coefficient of performance is 0.12 times 0.241 times the temperature difference and divided by the 
uh, conversion factor to watts. Divide by 12 watts, and we get a get a coefficient of performance of about uh, 10.7, which is actually pretty pretty impressive. So let's actually look at the coefficient of performance uh, over the entire uh, all the measurements that we took on, on our Earth tube over a five day period. So the blue dots. Let's focus on the blue dots first. Uh, first look on the on the left side of the, the the plot when the outside temperature, which is plotted on the on the horizontal axis, gets down below 20 degrees. That coefficient of performance is up over 15, and uh, again, that that works out to over uh, 200 watts of, of effective heating, which is which is pretty impressive. Um, as the temperature outside temperature rises, notice when the outside temperature is, is warmer than what's in the Earth tube, then uh, as it turns out, we're actually the Earth tube is actually cooling the air inside the greenhouse, so it's tending to, to moderate it. So that coefficient of performance becomes negative. Now, if we were worried about cooling, then we'd be happy with a negative coefficient of performance. But notice how these points, which are, are just plotted uh, by, uh, plotted without any prior knowledge of this, uh, they, it fits a, fits a straight line very well. Now, what are these orange points? So uh, what I did, uh, and I'll show in part two of the, of the series, um, I actually installed a heat exchanger on the, on the uh, downpipe. But it was just it was just a metal a metal pipe made from from aluminum cans. But what it does is it helps transfer heat better from the bottom of the earth tube, where it's the most uh, consistent temperature, to the air that's going down. And what happens is notice here that at a, say at uh, the temperatures of like 27 degrees Fahrenheit, we're actually getting coefficients of performance at 16 or 17. So so we're getting more efficiency out of the earth tube by adding that uh, heat exchanger. And if you tune into part two, then I'll actually show you the heat exchanger and how I built it. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and, and please, I look forward to uh, hearing your comments in the uh, uh, comment section. Uh, this, is, this is not my day job. I just am doing this as kind of a hobby and uh, a hedge against uh, being in the oil business, uh, which is not doing so well as, as, at this time. But I uh, hope you find this useful and uh, I want to learn, learn with you. Thanks.